Okay, so we're going to sketch the graph of this function with nested floor functions. So a good overall approach for this sort of problem where you've got composite functions, like functions within different functions, is that we could start with the innermost function, then gradually build up step by step, working outwards. And we'll do exactly that. So we'll start actually just by drawing a graph of y equals the floor function of x to begin with. Then we'll look at y equals 2x plus the floor function of x, and so on, just building up really gradually so that we understand exactly what's going on with our function at each stage there. So to draw the graph of the floor function of x, we can remember that the floor function is essentially the integer part of any positive number, so it would always round down. So for example, between 0 and 1, 0, 0 0.1, even up to 0 0.9, you would round down to 0. But then once you reach 1, you would get 1 as your output until you go up to 1.9, and then eventually when you reach 2, you start to get 2 as your output. So if I just label a few points here on our axes, and you can think of the floor function more formally as being the largest integer, which is less than or equal to x here. So we can start to fill in using the filled in circle notation. The floor function of 0 would actually be 0, then the floor function of 1 would be 1, then we can use the non-filled in circle just to indicate where our function has essentially jumped up by 1 there. And similarly the floor function of 2 is 2, the floor function of 3 goes up to 3, and it continues like this with a picture looking like steps like this. So then once we go into the negatives, let's say we go down to just negative 0 0.1 to begin with, this would go down to the floor function of negative 0 0.1 would be negative 1. So we jump down, anything slightly less than 0 would go down to negative 1 until we get beyond that, so negative 1.1, this would now round down with the floor function to negative 2, and so on. So the pattern continues just like this, even for our negatives. So now that we've got a picture for the floor function, we can start to think about y equals 2x plus the floor function as our next step. So we'll just really gradually increase in complexity, doing it one piece at a time. So we could actually draw y equals 2x. I'll just do this as a dotted line here to see what the original graph would look like for y equals 2x, but then we want to add the floor function to this. So you can actually start just between 0 and 1, you can see that nothing changes, you're just adding 0 to y equals 2x, including at 0. But then once you reach x is 1, then the floor function of x goes up to 1, so we need to actually add 1 to our graph of y equals 2x. So we jump up by 1 to 3 here, then we continue all the way until x is 2, so we would go along, there'd be a discontinuity again here at 5, where it would jump up to 6. So when you plug in x equals 2, you have 2 times 2 plus the floor function of 2 goes up to 6, and it continues like this. So instead of having horizontal steps, we've now got some diagonal lines joined together. And similarly for the negatives, y equals 2x, our dotted line, we now need to take away 1 when x is between 0 and negative 1, and we follow the discontinuity pattern here, so you'd have a non-filled in circle, we've jumped down there, but we don't actually take the value negative 1 at 0, y equals 2x plus the floor function of x is 0 at 0, and then once we get to negative 1, we're all the way down to negative 2, minus 1, so we're at minus 3 there, and then we jump down, and it continues like this. So it's like having a graph of y equals 2x, but jumping up by 1, every time we go along one on the x-axis. So now for our next step, all we're going to do is take this function 2x plus the floor function of x, and then take the floor function of that, just breaking it up into really small steps. So later we'll subtract this from 4x, and eventually we'll take the floor function of all of that. So let's start by thinking what happens between 0 and 1. So you can see here that our original graph, before we take the floor function, it goes from 0 actually all the way up to 2. So we should consider this just between 0 and 1 on the y-axis. So here, the floor function of anything between 0 and 1, not including 1, this will just go down to 0. So between 0 and, you can see when x is a half, y is going to be 1. So between 0 and a half, our function is just going to be equal to 0 when we take the floor function. So I actually start labelling 0.5 and we'll add in 1.5, 2.5 here. So it makes sense to break this up into steps of width one half. 
So then after this point, we jump up to 1 because our original function is equal to 1 when x is 1 half. So we take the floor function of that and that would give us 1. Then this continues along until x is 1, where here we reach this point at 2. So now here, y is never actually equal to 2. It jumps up from 1.9 and so on and it goes all the way to 3. So we actually bypass anything where the floor function would be equal to 2 there. So we're always equal to one point something, then we jump all the way up to three. So instead of jumping up just the one unit like before, we're now jumping up two units. And this continues between one and 1.5. So then when we're at 1.5, you can see our original function is equal to four there. So here we would just jump up by one unit to four. Then we continue along until we reach x is two. So this is this point here where we bypass 5 and 5 point anything all the way up to 6. So once again we'd have a jump of height 2 units there. Then we go along to 2.5 and we go up to 7, go along to 3 and so on. So the pattern would continue like this where we've got our pairs of jump size 1 then a jump of size 2 where we're going along half a unit between each of these jumps. And the pattern extends similarly if we go downwards. So here we would bypass actually anything which would round down to negative 1. So as soon as we get x negative, less than 0, you'd get something which would round all the way down to negative 2. So similarly here, we would jump down 2 units, we'd go along to negative a half, at which point, if x is actually equal to negative a half, you'd have minus 1 plus the floor function of negative a half would give you minus 2. And then we would jump down by just the 1 here, we'd go along another half to negative 1, negative 3. But then from negative 3, you can see we go down to negative 4. We'd actually bypass anything which would round down to negative 4. And from this point onwards, our floor function would give us negative 5. So we would actually go down two units here to negative 5. And the pattern would continue like this. So we have this pair of, we move along a half, up one, along a half, then up two, along a half, up one, along a half, up two, and so on. So now we'll have a go at subtracting this function from 4x and see what the graph of that is going to look like. And for this step, we'll work out what's going on by considering the graph of y equals 4x and then looking at what we need to subtract in each of these intervals of width one half when we subtract our 4 function of 2x plus the floor function of x. So you know that between 0 and 1 half we're not actually subtracting anything, so we know that we've just got a line segment with gradient 4 here which goes between x is 0 and x is 0 0.5, so we go all the way up to y is 2 there. But then we have a jump up of size 1 here, so this will correspond when we subtract it to a jump down of size 1, so you're subtracting 1 now, so this all moves down 1, and we end up with between 0.5 and 1, nothing changes there, we're just subtracting 1. So we have, once again, a line segment with gradient 4 there going from 1 to 3 between x is 0.5 and x is 1. So now things get interesting here where we have a jump of size 2. So this corresponds to a jump of size 2 going down. So we've already subtracted 1, so here we just need to subtract another 2. So we actually go all the way from 3 back down to 1 here when x is 1. So we have a repeat of the same line segment, just half a unit across to the right, both with gradient 4. And then we have a jump up of size 1, which would give us a jump down of size 1 when we subtract the function. And it continues like this. This is between 1.5 and 2. So we now get up to 4 here on the y-axis. But then we get another jump up of size 2, so we've got to jump down 2 units so we get a repeat of the same line segment. You can start to see we've got some pairs forming like this. Then we would jump down one, and we would continue just like this. We'd get these pairs, and then it goes off where I've labelled on the axis, but the pattern would continue like this. Jump down two, then you would jump down only one, and so on. And the pattern continues similarly over to the left, going into negative values of x. So here, we're taking away zero, then suddenly we're taking away negative 2, so this corresponds to, going to the left, to take away negative 2 corresponds to a jump up, effectively, from here to here. But of course, going from left to right, that would be a jump down 
of size 2. So then this would go along to where x is negative a half. Then we have this jump down of size 1, so we would jump up, effectively going from right to left with size 1. Then we cross and end up down here. Then we've got our jump of size 2 there, which corresponds to a jump of size 2 going in the opposite direction here. And we start to see these nice pairs of line segments repeating. So over here we'd then have a jump of size 1. Then we would go all the way down here to negative 2. And then we would jump up size 2 down to negative 2 again. And similarly we just continue with this pattern on and on like this. So in a moment I'll draw a neater version of this. Then we're finally ready to have a look at what does the floor function of this function look like on a graph. And here when I've redrawn the graph, you'll notice I've just rescaled the x-axis slightly. So the gradient of each of these line segments is still 4, it's just all been rescaled. So now we're ready to look at what happens when we take the floor function of this. And we could try just like before, going between 0 and a half, seeing what happens, so what values do we take. But actually between 0 and a half, the y values go up from 0 almost to 2. So it actually makes more sense to look at this in intervals of width 1 quarter, which is why we've rescaled. So between 0 and a quarter, we start off with values which are less than 1 between 0 and 1, but then by the time we actually reach 1 on the y-axis at a quarter, we need to jump up when we take the floor function of that. So the floor function of all of these values is going to be 0, but then we jump up to 1 when x is a quarter. So then between x is a quarter and x is a half, all of these values here are between 1 and 2, and we never actually reach the value 2. So we continue along like this, and actually when x is equal to a half, we jump down to 1. So the floor function of all of these values is 1, and the floor function of 1 is also 1. So this discontinuity actually disappears here, and we just continue through here all the way along until x is 3 quarters. So when x is 3 quarters, we do jump up to 2 there when we take the floor function. So we have a discontinuity there, and we go up to 2. So then from here we go along until x is equal to 1. We never actually take the value y equals 3, and this jumps down to 1. So the floor function of 1 gives us 1, and then we jump back down actually. So we're going up, up, but then we go down a little bit. We go along for another quarter to one and a quarter, then this jumps back up to two here. Then we go along, once again, this discontinuity here disappears because we never actually achieve the value three, we're just between two and three. So we go along here just like before, and you start to see a pattern repeating here. So we go along a quarter up one, along a half up one, along a quarter down one, and then along a quarter up one, along a half up one, along a quarter down one, and so on. So the pattern repeats like this going off to the right, and we get the same sort of picture when we extend this going to the left as well, just in reverse. So I'll add that to the drawing now. So you can see we get this nice repeating pattern here. We'll have a look at this on its own without the previous function in a sec. But if we just extend this over to the left then, we have this pattern of we're going along the quarter, up one, along a half, up one, and so on, and then going in reverse, we never quite reach this value 2, so our discontinuity would actually start here, and we would be equal to 1 when we take the floor function of this all the way until x is minus a quarter. So at this point then, we would jump down to 0, and the floor function of all of these values would be 0 once again. But we then seem to jump up to 1, but we never quite take the value 1. So just like before, we don't actually need to have a discontinuity there. So all we care about for our new function is that this continues through here up until this point, where we then go down, and it just continues along like this, following this pattern over and over to the left and extending onwards. So we'll have a look at this now on its own without the non-floor function version of this in the way. So this is what our final graph looks like in the end on its own. We get this really nice structure. I think this is really cool how we can start with something that looks very complicated. I certainly don't have an intuitive picture for what this ought to have looked like in the beginning, but then breaking it down into lots of really small steps, 
we can start to understand exactly what's going on. And I think it's really neat that we can actually describe what's going on in the picture with really simple language of go across a quarter, up one, across a half, up one, across a quarter, down one, and then repeat this pattern across a quarter, up one, across a half, up one, across a quarter, down one, and so on. And similarly, we can extend to the left, but in reverse, making sure our function is right continuous. So I think this is one that's particularly interesting to have a look at in Desmos. So I've included something in the description there where you can also try tweaking your numbers so the four to change these positives and negatives, etc. You can get some really interesting, very different looking graphs to this just by making some quite small changes.